and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. I'm Ryan Levy from 3DP Coaster Design, and you're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Hi, I'm Steph from Emotional Roller Coasters, and you're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Hi, this is Austin from Amusement Insider, and you're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Hi, this is Chuck, and you're listening to Coaster Challenge Podcast. Hi, I'm Grace Peacock, Director of Communications at Canada's Wonderland, and you are listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? Yes, I accept the Coaster Challenge. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? Coaster Challenge Podcast is here. It's time to face your fears. Get that theme park therapy and let us go through Coaster your Challenge Podcast is here. Your fear can disappear. We know that theme park therapy can dry up all your tears. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? Yes, I accept the Coaster Challenge. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? We accept because you know we're not average. You're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. A journey where people become fearful to fearless, all from riding roller coasters. So please secure your hats and glasses and keep your hands and arms inside the podcast. It's time to accept the Coaster Challenge with your host, Andrew Locke. Hi, everyone. This is Andrew, one of the executive producers of the Coaster Challenge podcast. Today, I've got a very special and seasonally appropriate guest. The uh, Coaster Challenge podcast is proud to welcome from SeaWorld Orlando, Manager of Creative Show Operations, Kyle Smith. Welcome, Kyle. Thanks for having me, Andrew. Absolutely. We're pl- proud to have you. And uh, I understand that uh, you obviously work for Sir work there at SeaWorld. Uh, tell me, you know, to start off with, uh, you know, tell me about yourself and tell me what you do. You know, what does it mean to be a cre- manager of creative show operations? I have an idea myself, but, you know, for our audience and for, you know, just kind of help ex- kind of set the tone here. Yeah, of course. Um, like I, like you mentioned, my name is Kyle Smith. Um, I am the manager of creative show operations here at SeaWorld Orlando. I have um, worked at SeaWorld for about almost the last five years, um, but re- most recently in this new role for the past year. Um, so which is super exciting and I'm continuing to grow every day and sort of making it through that full cycle of events that we do here, which if you're familiar with SeaWorld Orlando, we do an event every single weekend of every single weekend of the year. So <laughs> we love to stay busy here at the park and offering something different to all of our guests that come, um, especially, you know, a lot of local pass holders come in and we like to switch it up and and create some different events Um you know, we have a wide variety of events and, and, and it's fun to be a part of that team. So specifically for myself, um, I get to rotate through uh, multiple different events and what my focus is on. Um, so for right now, it is preparing um, our park for our Hallow Scream event, which is coming up really quickly. And um, it's actually um, the second year. So we had a first year last year and we're coming back this year bigger and better. So being a, a manager of creative show operations, it actually entitles um, with the planning of the creative side of things. It, it involves logistics. It involves casting. It involves a little bit of technical and of costuming and design. Um, we sort of have the, the eye over all aspects when you're planning an event or um, a new show or you know anything in regards to uh, in the entertainment world. That's awesome. That's fantastic. And thanks for the explanation. Makes a lot of sense based on the, the your title, the name of it itself. And uh, that's great. That's great. And we'll uh, dive into that. Of course, we'll be talking a lot about uh, Hallow Scream here in the interview. And that's why I said you're a very seasonally appropriate guest, given that we're uh, having our haunt season right now with uh, some haunt uh, flavored and uh, themed episodes, if you will, talking to actually a variety of, of haunt producers, a couple other parks like yourselves, as well as some independent haunts here This uh, in the second season of our podcast, uh, which is always fun. I'm a huge fan of haunts myself, and and I uh, love talking to people about, about things like this, so you're going to have fun with that. Uh, one quick just kind of follow-up question. Um, you mentioned uh, that you've been working for SeaWorld for five years. Do you have any other experience either with uh, themed entertainment or theme parks or haunts before that, or if you could maybe kind of talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. So I uh, came into the industry um, from my background growing up. Uh, I'm actually a professional figure skater. So I was in the performer oh, wow. role uh, 
in my younger days. And um, I toured the country and the world uh, with Feld Entertainment's Disney on Ice before. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Into this role. Um, so that was a super fun part of my life, um, traveling the world and seeing new places every single week. Um, from there, I went to school. I'm actually a UCF alumni, and I went to school with oh, nice. um, my degrees in entertainment management. And throughout that time and my time at school and things like that, um, I did a lot of work with different uh, production companies, either locally to Orlando or across uh, the U.S., and got a whole bunch of experience producing different styles of shows, whether that was in the ice skating world or whether that was maybe in the stage shows or even more event management. So that's my background when it comes to why I'm here and what my experience is in entertainment. And then when I started at SeaWorld Orlando, I was um, a stage manager and I've gotten the wonderful opportunity to pretty much work in every single venue that we have here at SeaWorld, which is, we have everything from our traditional animal presentations, we have our Sesame Street party parade, we have, we do concerts throughout the year here, and we do multiple different fireworks shows, um, so it, it is a wide variety, and that's one of the coolest things about working at SeaWorld is that we, we do offer so much variety and so much variation that that allows you to grow in extreme ways which is i'm super thankful for and i'm glad to be sitting here in this position today thank you that's fantastic kyle and you, and you mentioned uh one of the acronyms you mentioned in there i'm familiar with but our audience may not um is ucf which is university of central florida which is uh kind of the east end of orlando it's it's not part of the, it's not really where the theme parks are i'm familiar with it because i used to work near there uh, and UCF is actually uh, the largest university, I think, in the U.S. Or, or, you know, it's very much up there. I know it's it's huge, gigantic. And specifically the theme parks and theme entertainment, uh, the Rosen College of uh, Hospitality, uh, you know, it, it just everything related to hospitality and entertainment. Uh, UCF is a fantastic school. I have several friends that went there that worked in the industry and did very well in the industry and still do very well. So you are uh, got a great pedigree there and you've got great experience. Uh, I'm also familiar with Feld Entertainment uh, based out of there, I think, in the Tampa area. Ringling Brothers used to be a part of that. Of course, Ringling Brothers got retired, but now things like Disney on Ice and, and uh, you know, shows like that. And I know you guys have the Jurassic, uh, Jurassic World show going on, and which, which looks really cool. But, yeah, some great entertainment there. So, uh, yeah, great experience there for you as well. Now, speaking of shows, which, again, is central to what you do at SeaWorld, Kyle, uh, I'm a Platinum Pass holder, as I was mentioning to you before we started recording the interview here. And I'm, I've been to all the SeaWorld parks, uh, all the bush parks. I'm going to be going to Sesame Place for the first time here in another week or so to ride Oscar's Wacky Taxi. Uh, again, this is a coaster coaster podcast, first and foremost. Nice. Um, I'm, I count my credits. So um, looking forward to that. But, uh, you know, I've been to SeaWorld many times because I live in Orlando. You know, I live maybe 10 minutes away from SeaWorld. And, you know, I love the coasters love the animals um i do i did want to make a point at some point in this interview as Lori knows this about me that uh, i've been a long time supporter of sea world and regardless of you know a film we won't have to mention here um i still very much stand with sea world and i'm not talking about the shows you know the entertainment you know for example like the stage shows that you do or the coasters or the rides i'm talking about the animals and I know how much good that SeaWorld does uh, for animals, rescuing animals. I used to work and volunteer for the Marine Mammal Center in California, which partners with SeaWorld. I know better than most people what good SeaWorld does. And we're very proud to have you guys as part of the Coaster Challenge here uh, talking to us. And again, we're big supporters of everything SeaWorld does, including all the wonderful things you do with animals. So I just want to mention that. Um, and before I forgot, um, but in any case, back to the back to the entertainment again. I love the coasters and everything, but nothing against the coasters. Some great rides, uh, you know, great dark rides you guys have. Animal exhibits are great. Um, where I feel Sea World, and I'm not just saying this because I'm talking to you, Kyle. I honestly, I've told friends this. I probably could find them. They can they can give me a credit here. Um, I think where Sea World really does the best, and, and Bush as well to some degree is in its shows, um, the entertainment, the staged entertainment. Uh, Celtic Fire at Busch Gardens Williamsburg is Disney-level quality. It's absolutely incredible. And all my coaster enthusiast friends, they tell me they go to Busch Gardens, they, yeah, yeah, I rode Pantheon, I rode Verbolton. Did you go see Celtic Fire? They're like, what's that? What coaster is that? I'm like, again, I'm one of those a coaster enthusiasts that loves everything about the parks. And it 
can drive me a little crazy of sometimes. I'm like, come on, people, do everything, not just the coasters, not just the thrill rides. But but closer to home there, um, besides Bush Gardens, uh, you know, the Christmas celebration event that you guys put on every year. Uh, I go to the media event every year. You know, Lori's kind enough to invite us. So we have a great relationship with Lori and her team. Uh, and I love going to that event, but I go multiple times besides the media event itself, taking friends, family, um, just fantastic. And you mentioned you're an ice skater, and that's how you got started. Winter Wonderland on Ice at Bayside Stadium is absolutely incredible. And any, and I'm assuming you're involved with that in terms of on the management side, right? Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Uh, that is yeah. you know, one of my first shows when I started working here that I was able to be a part of on the management side. Nice. Of things. Um, and it continues to be one of my favorites. It's sort of uh, you know, brings me back to my childhood and my um, time with Dizzy on Ice. And so it is something that I look forward to every single year um, doing the ice show. And it's so unique, like you mentioned, um, doing that show outside in Florida on the beautiful Bayside <laughs> Lake that we have. I mean, you you cannot name a better show venue that I am aware of. I mean, it is World class. Um, last year, it did actually win the IAPA Brass Ring Award, nice. which was super awesome that um, that we were able to accept that award for that for the show. Um, and we're excited to bring it back this year as well. So there's a little uh, fast forward to Christmas. <laughs> awesome. No, I look forward to that. It's. I mean, I'm not an ice skater. I have two left feet. So anything with performance and sports, I'm not a, not an athlete. So I'm always an admiration of athletes and performers you know at, you know on a physical level that can do things that i can't do because it's like it's amazing and i'm i'm not envious i'm just amazed by it and uh just some of the what the ice skaters do at at, at that winter wonderland show is breathtaking i mean just especially the main couple you know the main the main male and female lead like the main stars the, the stunts that really i can't put any other words stunts that they do Amazing. And then the backdrop with the great costuming, a little bit of humor, the setting, the, 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 the theming, the beautiful music, of course, the holiday music. It's uh, such a positive show. It's, I just love, love, love it. Um, I also, I, I know you guys haven't had it in the past couple of years, but Oh, Wondrous Night. Absolutely incredible. I don't know. Is there any chance that's going to come back to see what Orlando or I'm not sure. I'm actually not sure. But there are a lot of guests that obviously that was their favorite Christmas tradition here in Orlando, not only Orlando, but um, in the SeaWorld family. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, the Christmas celebration as a whole, all the, the food festival things and the, the uh, Sea of Trees, you know, it's just all these things. This great event. And you, you guys are right down the street from from Disney. And right across, you know, from Universal, I love those parks as well. I've passed older there as well. But as far as the holidays go, I, I see where I think is, does the best job in, in Orlando, which is, is uh, you know, hot, tall order there. Um, but, you know, with Hallow Scream, which we'll be talking about more later, you guys, this, again, the staging, some of the the, show, the shows that you guys did last year. Uh, amazing. Looking forward to you, what you're doing this year. Uh, you know, I don't have kids, Kyle. So I'm an adult child, if you will. <laughs> um, and I grew up with Sesame Street. I loved watching Sesame Street. And of course, SeaWorld has the strong Sesame, Sesame Street partnership and licensing and IP in, in your parks. Uh, and you guys have do a great job there at SeaWorld Orlando. But because I don't have kids, I never thought I would go to see the Elmo Rock show that you do during, during the summer, during, uh, during Electric Ocean and all that. But um, there's, this, there's actually a Coaster Challenge connection for that show this year. Um, uh, that I will explain to you and, and why I did actually go to see that show about a week ago. So uh, does the name Ben Grant sound familiar to you by chance? No, I don't think so. Okay. He, I know you have a lot of performers in your shows. So Ben uh, is uh, a aspiring a musician, dancer, uh, entertainer, and his parents both perform at Disney, worked at Disney. They were both in kind of like processional over the years amongst other other singing type shows and so forth. And he's following in their footsteps. He's got a great voice. He's, he's maybe like 20 years old, young guy. He's got this whole life ahead of him. Um, we discovered him about six months ago. He's been on the show here on the podcast. And he actually, for our second season, he created uh, the music and lyrics and performs our, our theme song. And so I'm, I'm, you know, friends with him, friend of the show. And we were talking recently. He said, hey, come down to SeaWorld. I'm in the Elmo Rock show. And he alternates between, uh, or he was alternating between Elmo and being the, the host, Jesse, 
the character Jesse. And so I came down there, of course, when he was being Jesse, that way I can kind of see more what's going on and so forth. And he and I saw him last week as Jesse. He was fantastic. So uh, I've seen the Elmo Rock show. It was a great show. It was a really cute show. So another winner for SeaWorld. Yes. <laughs> Elmo Rocks is definitely a fan favorite, uh, guest favorite uh, every single year. It is a solid, great show. I mean, you cannot go to see that show and, you know, you'll be dancing and singing your way out of that theater at the end of the show. So uh, I can't speak um, anything greater than, you know, we're so thankful to be able to offer that to our guests again. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There's some great pop songs in there. It's not necessarily just Sesame street, but it's exactly. got some Sesame street aspects to it. Yeah, of course, of course. Okay. Well, yeah, well that was fun kind of talking about kind of entertainment overall. And again, SeaWorld does such a great job. And that's why uh, part of why I'm excited to talk to you in the second half of the interview our second two thirds, if you will, of the interview, which will be getting into Hollow Screen here coming up. But first few questions, just kind of want to talk to you about your own interests. So, how would you say that you know theme entertainment? And 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 I want to frame it beyond the fact that you've worked in theme entertainment because obviously that's a big deal. But you know, sure, it's been my living, it's been one of my passion. But but beyond you know working in theme entertainment from an enjoyment perspective. Um, how would you say that themed entertainment and, and themed amusement parks have impacted your life? Huge. Um, actually, I grew up in Virginia, um, not far from Busch Gardens, Williamsburg. And nice. um, so growing up, theme parks were always something that I love to visit. I love to, on family vacations, come to Orlando, come to, uh, we used to travel out west to California and, and go to theme parks as well. So theme parks and themed entertainment in general have sort of been in my blood since I was really little. I was also the, the teenager or the child growing up that uh, would research on my own um, family vacations and themed entertainment or where we needed to go or what new coaster or what new ride or what new show or what new parade was coming out. Uh, that was definitely a hobby for me growing up. So it's been in my blood for a long time. And I knew right away, um, you know, I, like I mentioned, I grew up being a professional figure skater and um, touring. I knew as soon as I started and was thankful for that experience that I wanted to go into the industry. Um, and I knew that's where I wanted my career path to be. Um, I still today, I love researching other parks and seeing what they're doing. I love going to other places, not only theme parks, but any themed experience or attractions and things like that and experiencing what they're putting out for the for the for their guests and for the public and how they're continuing to just push boundaries and to create new experiences new um, levels of being immersed inside different worlds and being able to take you know any person that comes into any whether it's a theme park or whether it's into a themed attraction or a theater or any of those aspects and just transform you into a new world and, and just whatever's going on in the world. Um, you know, it is a crazy world that we live in, I, I believe. And to be able to take that out and just have fun or teach um, a new thing maybe, or experience a new way and, and showing diversity and showing, um, you know, just pure fun entertainment. Um, who doesn't want to experience that? So it, it's really, I'm thrilled to be, have a career in this field. That's fantastic. So it sounds like kind of to sum things up, your passion for enjoying these types of things, you know, as a kid, as a teenager, you know, prior to getting into figuring out what your career is going to be, that passion, you really wanted to not just enjoy that passion, but live it and work it. And that's where you're at now. Absolutely. You know, it, so many times, you know, you're trying to go to sleep at night and you're thinking about the next new thing or trying to be like, how can I push the boundaries on this? Or you wake up in the middle of the night and you're, you just, your creative brain can't turn off. Those are the moments that I, I love. I mean, you know, you're like, dang it, I want to be asleep right now. I should be sleeping. Um, but it, it's fun to get lost in these immersive worlds and to create something that um, can make other people happy. That's fantastic. I'm a huge fan of musicals, both uh, live performed as well as uh, cinematic, you know, movie based musicals. And what you just described there makes me think of my favorite movie musical of all time. Um, huge fan of Pasek and Paul. You probably know where I'm going with this. 
you sounded like what you described as the uh, song of a million dreams and the enactment of it from the for the beginning of uh greatest showman which yeah is an incredible film so yeah no, I, I love it where you're you know, someone that's creative like barnum you know where you're just you know just always thinking about what i could do or oh, this idea and again you're you're in such a creative role so i'm I'm glad that you're always thinking because the more you think the the better we all can enjoy what you've come up with so that's fantastic uh yeah i um and just a quick aside here again as i mentioned i love live entertainment um you know again i love things beyond the coasters i'm on on a this road trip right now i'm gonna be in new york city for a couple of days as part of this trip and they're going to be go, going to see, I just bought tickets uh, to see Dear Evan Hansen. So mm. again, love Pasek and Paul. They are just amazing. That was their first work that they did together. Uh, and then also going to be going to see the Stranger Thing Experience, which is in Brooklyn near Coney Island. Um, you know, again, it's not just about the coasters, but, you yeah. know, and, and, and so forth. So uh, my, my next question for you is, uh, you know, you've worked at SeaWorld now for five years. So obviously, you know, the park. What would you say is your favorite attraction there and why? My favorite attraction is definitely Mako. Um, nice. I'm a huge Mako fan. Uh, you know, sometimes if you're, you know, we all have bad days sometimes, you might just need to go ride a coaster and I'm that person. Um, I love, you know, how you just come up out of your seat um, on the, the lift hill, I mean, on the hills and uh, it's just pure adrenaline. Nice. That's a great answer. There's no wrong answer, of course, to this, but uh, Mako is very popular amongst us coaster enthusiasts. Um, it's classified, as you may know, as a B&M. That's the company that makes it, Boulder and Mallard. Um, hyper. It's a hyper coaster because it's 200 feet or 200, 200 feet or taller, uh, up to 300 feet. It's considered a hyper coaster. Uh, and uh, that is considered by most of us, myself included, many of my friends, to be the best B&M hyper. So, and that's a amazing class of coaster. So yeah. great, great answer. It is also my favorite, uh, at least my favorite coaster at SeaWorld. So I uh, love the answer. So thank you for that. And again, the things we're talking about here, you know, coasters, of course, we talk about all the time. But even the entertainment stuff, like you were talking about a moment ago, where you just get away, you escape and so forth. That is all about what the mission of Coaster Challenge is and about our podcast as part of that, which is for people to have theme park therapy to get a break from that, as you described earlier, crazy world that we live in. It is a crazy world, stressful, all kinds of negative, bad things happening all the time, unfortunately, yeah. and getting some positivity in your life and just getting away from it all and being able to immerse yourself in a show, um, you know, whether it be outside Bayside Stadium there, or inside one of your theaters, um, or, you know, getting on rides and so forth and just getting that immersion and getting a few minutes of, of break where you don't have to worry about the world's problems because they're going to be there when you step outside the park gates. Don't worry about that. That's going to happen in regardless. Just focus while you're there. Be in the moment. And so theme park therapy is what we're all about. And, and entertainment is a big part of that, both in, inside and outside the parks. And so, again, you know, we're happy to talk to you as someone that helps people to really live better lives. To have, it's not just about having fun. So. I totally so I appreciate believe that. you kind of see things. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. So this next question, you can answer it either, you know, whether it be maybe some experience from working uh, or it could be just as a guest, if you will. But what would you say is your favorite memory from a theme park or amusement park? My favorite memory um, or my favorite thing, I guess, my favorite memory is definitely I have many family vacations where um, I came to Central Florida theme parks and was able to experience one of the many parades in our industry. And still today, the Sesame Street Party Parade is my favorite parade. Um, it is world class. It is so much fun. The Sesame Street friends and all of our performers here they really do such an amazing job at bringing so much joy and love to all of the guests out there on the street. And so when I first started here, um, it was like right before we even had Sesame Street land and right. uh, the excitement of having a parade coming to our park here, um, you know, it was transformational because when I started, we did not have such a large character department 
or large entertainment and a performer aspect department. And we, we got to grow so much and be able to offer, you know, a career and development and job opportunity to so many of those uh, that, you know, they dream of, you know, moving to Orlando and having a, a career or having a time period where they're in, in entertainment and being a performer and seeing them every day and seeing them grow. I, I, that's one of my favorite parts. So moral of the story, I guess my favorite thing is coming to Orlando and seeing different parades or even, you know, in our industry. And I'm so thankful to be able to be a part of that now um, on this side of the, 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 this, this side of the street, I guess I would say. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. I, uh, you know, as they say, you know, who doesn't like a parade? Everyone loves a parade, but uh, um, you know, certainly Orlando has some fantastic parades, whether it be at Disney, of course, um, you know, whether it be, you know, nor, you know, regular time of year or the Christmas parade and so forth, you know, or Universal Orlando, uh, their Mardi Gras parade. And, and I can relate to what you're saying a little more personally, because um, as a pass holder, I, I've never had the chance before. It just never has worked out. But this year I did actually get the opportunity to be on a float, which, you know, pass holders we get to do. Even, even gay guests can potentially get a chance. And I have to say, I've never done that before, you know, being on a float before ever in a parade period. And it was so much fun. It was, it was like the like a half hour of like just talk about theme park therapy. I wasn't thinking about any kind of problems. I was just enjoying making people happy, throwing beads at them. You know, they were clamoring for me to throw beads and, they, and they'd catch them and they'd smile and they'd jump for joy. I mean, that making people happy. I mean, that's what you do for a living. Yeah. I got to see that for like 30 minutes. And yeah, it's infectious. It's amazing. So that, you know, actually got to be a part of parade in a really amazing way. And yeah, you know, as you said, you know, there at SeaWorld, uh, the Sesame Street Parade, uh, you know, got get, getting to be on the other side of it, and, you know, producing and creating it. Uh, it's a great parade. It's a cute parade. Sesame Street land itself is really amazing. You know, obviously you don't have um, Sesame Place. It's not a whole park like what you have in, in uh, Pennsylvania that I'll be seeing next week. But it, it's a great land for, for not being an entire park. It's fantastic. Yes. And it's it's just so well themed and the parade, again, the kids love it. It's a very cute, very positive, high energy. So I, I definitely, I think that's, a, again, a great answer for that question. So thank you. So let's go ahead and switch gears, as I've alluded to several times here in the beginning of the interview. And let's talk all about your next big event, which is, you know, basically happening right now as this episode airs, which is Hollow Screen. So, so last year... 2021 was the, and I love puns, so I'm going to go ahead and use it, was the inaugural fear of Hallowstream, not as an event overall, because you've had it at, for example, Bush Gardens Tampa down down the, the road there in Tampa, about an hour away, had that for years. But it was the first year for SeaWorld Orlando. And uh, I had, you know, obviously it was my first time going. I was uh, part of the media event. And again, thanks to Lori and her team for inviting us out. And I had a blast and I actually went uh, I think one more day, maybe more than one day after the media event, uh, like I do with the Christmas celebration. And, you know, I, I would say I was blown away. Now, that's just my personal opinion. Now, obviously, you guys are doing the event again, which is a good sign. But just talk to me, maybe summarize how sex, how successful was the event and what did you guys learn from the initial offering? Yeah, of course. So, you know, the response that we got last year for being our, our inaugural fear, like you mentioned, uh, was overwhelming positive. Um, it People, the comments that we were getting and the, and the overall vibe, that whether it was social media or guest correspondence or things like that, is that they just loved every single aspect of it. Um, I won't mention that, but they said that, you know, it was better than other haunted events in uh, the town. And that was just thrilling. It was thrilling for us because we, you know, we are so much of a smaller team here at SeaWorld Orlando compared to our other park or other parks down the street. And we're so passionate. That's what makes us, you know, very different, I, I believe, um, is that every single one person that works here, we are passionate about the product that we help and we help develop and we help create. Um, and it, it is lots of love and passion put into the project. So with all of us hearing the response of the first event that way um, was just fantastic. And then, you know, with this year, you know, everyone's super excited to bring it back and be like, you know, it, it is our first time creating for some of us here, you know, an, a, 
we would say an adult rated event, right? A haunted event. Yep. We, we've never created that here in the park before, um, like you mentioned. And so we're now just all excited that evil is returning and, and um, <laughs> that, that we get to live this um, crazy world of, of hollow scream, which is super awesome. And uh, if you, you know, like, I'm glad you got to experience the event last year and I'm excited for anybody that is, is questioning whether they should come experience hollow scream right now. They should definitely come check it out because it's, it's very different. We're, we're, it's a whole new way of looking at a haunted and attraction um, with different offerings that we, that we do have. Absolutely. And like I said, I absolutely loved the event last year. I remember the, when I went after the media event where I didn't kind of knew what to expect, had already done all the houses and the shows, you know, one of my favorite things to do with parks in general, this isn't just haunts or special events is when I've been to that event or that park before, to take a friend or multiple friends or family that haven't been and to be kind of that tour guide and to show them whatever it is and to, to you know, I'm anticipating because knowing their tastes or knowing something that I love a lot and when they experience it and seeing the look on their faces and talking to them about it afterwards. And, and uh, that's some of my, one of my favorite things could be getting on a coaster, whatever it may be, you know, with someone. And so I remember doing that again with Hollow Scream later on in the season uh, after I'd experienced it media night and yeah, the response was great. And even friends that I didn't necessarily go with together, but friends of mine in Orlando and beyond that went to the event another night that I didn't go again, overall, very positive. A uh, number of friends that I, you know, had the, um, the basically the, the, the pass, I, I forget what you guys call it, but basically where you can go every night, um, you know, kind of like a frequent fear pass, they have a universal, um, uh, you know, people were, were using them and really enjoying it. And, you know, and, and for a variety of ways, sometimes it's to get some extra night rides on Mako, but also to go in the houses and enjoy the scare zones, the shows and the specialty drinks and the food and everything. It was all fantastic. I was, I, I again, I'm not just telling you this, Cox, I'm talking to you, being honest. Uh, I was blown away by how good that first year was. So you guys knocked it out of the park. Thank so you. we so appreciate absolutely. that. Absolutely. So with that in mind, can you tell us about what's new this year and what changes are happening this year compared Absolutely. to last year in Hollow Scream? Of course. So if you're familiar with our event last year, uh, you know, we started off with four haunted houses um, and we had uh, four scare zones. And this year we are moving up to five haunted houses and we have seven scare zones. Wow. So, with that being said, we also had four different specialty bars, and this year we are adding a fifth specialty bar into the mix as well. And specialty bars are actually one of my favorite parts about Hollow Scream and what makes it different from other haunted events is that the fact of we take, you know, some of our existing um, awesome bars and culinary locations that we have in, in, in our park, and we transform them into complete different um, spaces, you know, to a different world. And we add an entertainment offering associated. So not only are the delicious cocktails or your, your ice cold beer or seltzers or whatever you might enjoy at your event, um, you can get that with our culinary team but it's also we're adding entertainment to it. We're adding decor. We're adding themed elements to it that you can fully be immersed. You're not just waiting in line. You're not just talking to your bartender or to your favorite culinary ambassador. Ambassador, you're you're experiencing it. So we, you know, with um, costuming and with makeup and with decor, like I mentioned, we're giving you a full experience in every single one of those specialty bars, which there's no one else that really does that. And that that's what sets us apart. It's one of the things that sets us apart that um, it, to me is so cool. It's not that, like I mentioned, you're just waiting in line and not experiencing something. You're not just waiting in a line and you're getting your drink, moving on to the next location you can spend time in that specialty bar. You might be able to experience, whether it's um, at Poison Grotto, our amazing aerialist that will perform above you as you're sipping on your favorite cocktail or siren cocktail that you might have there. It could be um, our, our Glacier Bar, which we have Glacier Bar tormented. 
that what's a cool part about Glacier Bar Tournament, if you didn't experience last year, it is returning this year to events. So if you come check it out, um, it does offer a interactive, basically like you're playing a video game, but as a scare button. So it when you go up to the the station there you can see what's going on on a live feed inside beneath the ice which beneath the ice is one of our haunted houses in our wild arctic area of the park and you can be able to not only have your fresh cocktail from glacier bar tormented but then head over and have your friends go inside and you can scare them by when you're pressing on the button and a live special effect happens in real time on the video uh, when they're experiencing or when they're walking through the house. So th that's another one of my personal favorites that uh, I don't know if that's anywhere else. So, Yeah, you know, there's uh, several things to unpack there. That last thing you mentioned about Beneath the Ice, which is a great house, by the way, um, that where you can, it's kind of like the uh, the haunted house equivalent of, being able to put the coin in or sometimes they're free push the button and spray people with rapids rides you know with, with, a, yes. with a with a burst or something which is everyone loves that so i'd never seen that you know before and i've been to a lot of hot events theme park haunts major productions as well as independent haunts many of them i'm, I'm again i'm a haunt fiend i'm a haunt aficionado mm -hmm. and i've never seen that before and um, and I, in fact i was just talking to a friend of mine about this um, when I was at uh, Bush Gardens Tampa, your sister park there in Florida, uh, talking about Hall Scream there and that, that they don't have that there. Because again, I've never been to Hall Scream in Tampa. I need to go maybe this year. But in any case, yeah, that's a really unique thing that where you can do things interactively. And I, I love it. So that, that's great. That's coming back. Um, you mentioned the scare zones. So that's I'm glad you mentioned that because that kind of was a good mnemonic device for me there. Um, I mentioned how much I love the event last year. One of the things I loved about the event last year was the scare zones. And what I was blown away by is how interactive the scare actors were. And I'm not sure if, you know, if that's, well, actually, I'll just ask you. So with how interactive they are, is that direction they were given where they told, hey, you guys can kind of have fun with it. You can talk to people. Like, how did that happen? Because it wasn't just one person that Absolutely, did that. Yeah. I mean, that was definitely our goal. That was the direction. Um, not only was that the direction or the creative intent behind it, it, it was the fact of, you know, we were so lucky that so many ambassadors that came to work for us and that work for us this year coming back, that they were so excited to be able to sort of, in a way, be a pioneer to a new event in the Orlando industry and to the theme park industry, is that we really didn't have to challenge people in, in a lot of ways because every single person was so passionate. And, and I do believe that 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 helped our event so much that we're, we're, we're thankful for them. And like I mentioned, people wanted to be there. They wanted to be on the same team to be able to just, you know, make people scream and make people almost pee their pants. Basically um, <laughs> who doesn't like that? Yeah. You know, that's the point of going to a haunted attraction and um, just experiencing the whole event. So you know, the scare zones, people love them. People, I mean, including myself that, um, the scare actors enjoy themselves and I, you'll be able to see that again this year as well. Awesome. That was one of my favorite things is the interactivity because it's both awesome because it's an additional level of immersion, which again, immersion's great. It's fun. It's great theme park therapy, but also it was, it's funny. I mean, for me, you know, a lot of people, they misunderstand haunts, especially ones that don't are, aren't fans of them and don't really go to them. They think, Oh my gosh, it's all about being scared. Well, yeah, there there can be that aspect where you're having this very safe kind of uh, anxiety kind of experience, just like a coaster is a safe, scary experience in its yeah. own right. But they're but, but the haunts they're funny too. Yeah, I mean, you're laughing with your friends and you're laughing at how how much the these scare actors get into it and they're kind of quirky characters and they have personalities. But actually, that's a good segue. Speaking of having fun and and laughing at a haunt event you mentioned the theme bars and i you know one of the things that i think is a good sign of a good event or a good park is you may have been to that multiple times and you notice new things each time i mean that shows the the comprehensiveness of it how much thought and planning goes in and i had that experience last year at hollow scream at sea world even though it was your first year i had not discovered one of those theme bars the first time i went but a later visit I did, and I, I don't remember the name of the bar itself, what the, you know, the themed name was, but it's at the Sharks Bar. And 
the there's a comedy act that you guys had there the longshoreman longshoreman and, tavern and it was basically like you could think of it as a spiritual successor a modern day take on a three stooges but so funny and it's not just like a quick 30 second show it went on for and this is the good thing i'm not saying it's a bad thing you know for what i don't 10 15 minutes and they kept you know doing different things it was physical and of course you know it was also you know dialogue based but you know and there's a big crowd that when i watched it along with me there so well done is that is that coming back this year it is coming back uh, the longshoreman tavern is returning uh if you're familiar with seaworld orlando it is uh moving locations uh this is the big giveaway for the event this year is that we are expanding the footprint of hello scream to be completely all the way around 360 degrees around our bayside lake so the longshoreman tavern is coming back it is back um at the Flamecraft Bar, right on the la- edge of the lake, there on the patio, which um, oh yeah, which yeah. gives even the longshoremen more room to be rambunctious and absolutely hilarious. And uh, so, if you were a fan of Longshoreman Tavern, uh, we're giving them more space and more room for fun this year. So, go ahead and over to the Longshoreman Tavern and, and check them out. Nice, nice. That sounds like yeah, they were successful, and you guys are giving them more space because yeah, they were kind of a little bit limited on space there in front of of the the Sharks Bar, you know, the the uh, Longshoreman's Tavern theme bar there. Um, so that's awesome that they're coming back in an expanded form. Another thing for me to look forward to this yeah. year at, at Hollis Game. Awesome, awesome. So, speaking of kind of performance type things and shows, so you guys had two shows last year, and one of them was Siren Song. Yes. And which was outside there, you know, right in front of, well, where, where icebreaker is and where mm-hmm. beneath the ice bar, kind of, kind of the ice section, if you will, glacier bar, I should say, um, of, uh, of SeaWorld there. And when I first saw that, I saw that on media night and opening night. And I was like, what, okay, what, they're going to have some music was a DJ. I, you know, I didn't know what it was going to be. And in, well, I, I'm not going to, based on the answer to the question that I asked next, I'm, since I haven't asked you it yet, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but the surprise elements of that show are so creative, uh, just how how you are able to expand things beyond what I just, just said, I'll just say that much. So is that show coming back this year, Siren Song? Absolutely, 100%. Um, Siren Song, I'm not going to lie to you, is my favorite show at Hello Scream. Uh, talk about, you know, we've talked about multiple times throughout this conversation is the being immersed into a world and Siren Song is that right now, you know, Hallow Scream event, we wanted to, how do we bring Hallow Scream in the haunts and mix it with some of what we normally do on an everyday basis around the ocean and the water and even like a conservation message in there. And Siren Song was able yep. to bring all of those worlds and bring it back to the center of our mission at SeaWorld. And um, it's it, it's a fantastic show between the performers that are in it, the special effects, the music, the choreography, every single aspect about it. Uh, it it, it, it you you blink and it's like whoa it's it's already over not saying that it's a short show but um saying that you know it keeps you involved of what's going to happen next what element are we going to throw at you um like i said being completely in the center so if you're not familiar with this show i'll give you a little bit of more details of you when you come into hollow scream in the wild arctic plaza you're in the center of the action so siren song takes completely uh, all around you um and like almost a reverse um, round. And um, throughout that, there's multiple stages in the plaza where uh, the performers take over um, along with special effects. And so if you if you didn't get to experience Siren Song last year, it is coming back in its full glory. Um, and you know, since our Hell Scream event is centered around our sirens, um, it sort of explains the story of how the sirens got there, their backstory, and how they how we incorporate the, incorporate them throughout our entire event. This year, uh, we are scratching the surface, and our icon per se is scratch. So we are scratching the surface. This is only our second year, and we're just going to get bigger and better. And uh, <laughs> she is our icon this year, and so 
Nice. If you were a Scratch fan last year, and if you saw the show last year, you're going to know what I mean. If you did not see the show last year, well, I guess you got to come and check it out because um, then you'll understand. <laughs> you'll understand who Scratch is and, and what she's all about. And if you're like me, uh, she is one of my favorite sirens because uh, she pushes the envelope and yep. she is wild and she is creative. And at the end of the day, she um, she gets what she wants. And uh <laughs> Definitely uh, come check out Siren's song. Uh, and I won't give any more details out though, other than that, but uh, we're excited for it to come back. Awesome. Well, I'm glad I was vague when I uh, brought this question up and what I said before I actually asked my question in case it was coming back and hopefully and, and glad to see it is coming back. And yeah, Scratch is awesome. And uh, you know what I love about the show and I won't say specifics again for the same reasons I want people to be surprised I haven't seen it yet. But there is an aspect to the show that's um, a little bit more up close and personal. I guess that's all I'll say. That uh, I, I, I don't know if you'll get this reference, Kyle. Um, the I don't, I don't know if it was the last iteration of the Dolphin Show uh, there at SeaWorld, or might have been the one before. I think. But there used to be a Dolphin Show for years at the SeaWorld parks, where something happens where it's a lot more up close and personal and it's fools the audience and it and that what you got you you know what i'm talking about kyle yes. i want to get i want to yep. get details because it'll give away siren song the fact that you guys do kind of something similar to that in siren song love 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 it now was that just coincidence or was that actually an homage to the dolphin show uh just a coincidence just uh just creatively coincidence. planned okay. that way okay. yes Got it. Got it. Well, it's it's fantastic. So I would tell all our listeners, if you haven't seen Siren Song, don't skip it. Don't think, oh, it's just outside between a couple of the houses and the bar. It's actually an amazingly impressive show. And it's a crowd favorite. I remember how much people loved it last year and the crowds that would show up for it. So I can see why you guys are bringing it back. Yeah, of course. Now, speaking of crowd favorites, <laughs> speaking of crowd favorites. So, you know, we talked about earlier about how I and, and you know, my friends and you know a lot of people I know how impressed we all were with with Hollow Scream last year. Now you guys are awesome. The entertainment again I think is one of your strongest uh, aspects to SeaWorld Entertainment and the parks in general. But you guys did have a little bit of help. It's not like you created everything out of out of a vortex, out, you know, out of out of, out of nothing. Uh, you know the other parks, you know, you know the sister parks, especially Busch Gardens, Williamsburg, and Tampa. They've been doing the Hollow Scream, the Haunt events, and so forth. And one of the things that you um, you guys, uh, I don't want to say use the word borrow, but basically kind of be, were able to adapt from Busch Gardens Wingsburg was one of my absolute favorites at SeaWorld Orlando last year. I'd never been to the Haunt event at Busch Gardens Wingsburg. I've been to the park many times, but never for that event. And so this was all new to me. And what I'm referring to is your indoor show that you do during during Hallow Scream last year which was Monster Stop yes. which I love music and you know it's good for, it involves live singing and choreography but my favorite part of the show and I, and I, I guess it's okay to go ahead and say this it's not like it's a huge plot thing or anything in the middle of the show is this incredible knife based percussion act that comes out and I, the crowd just goes wild for it and I, yes. I played drums when I was in school I'm a per percussionist I'm very amateur but so I loved it from that reason too. But just such a fun show with some great kind of anachronistic, you know, modern music, but kind of refers to you know the Jack the Ripper, you know, those those times from hundreds of years ago, and just uh, really a, a well killer show. Again, I love my puns. So so Kyle, so tell me, is Monster Stomp coming back this year? That that is correct. Monster Stomp will be returning to the Nautilus Theater for Hall of Scream. Um, uh, every single night of the event, um, it is there, including those amazing percussionists. Uh, another cool thing about, like we mentioned with Siren Song, is that Monster Stomp has so many different layers um, on an entertainment level, um, not only with amazing um, you know, music and lighting, uh, but the, the talent that the performers bring, whether they're a dancer or whether they're a singer or live musician, whether that might be the guitarist or the drummers, there's so many different layers added to the show. Um, and that's what I do believe makes it such a great show. There's something for everyone um, to take away from that show. So don't want to be killed awesome. by Jack well, the Ripper. Getting, 
<laughs> no, of course not. Well, this keeps getting better and better. You know, with, with I'm glad to see that Monster Sonic's coming back. It's a fantastic show. And of course, you know, we are here in Florida and, you know, September, October still can be rather warm even at night. So, you know, it's a good place to, you know, take a seat from all the action, get a rest, get some AC, AC as well, but just enjoy an amazing show. I, I am, wow, I'm just really excited about this event. And of course, you're adding on more, you're adding on additional scare zones, which are fantastic, adding on another house. The houses were great. Uh, now, Manta, of course, is included as an available nighttime ride. It's a great nighttime ride. So, yeah, you guys are just, you know, getting better and better and better. That's awesome. So uh, I'd like to kind of la last kind of couple questions here talking about Hollow Street. Is this going to dive in a little bit to the creative side um, kind of in a general sense? And this is something these are the questions that we ask whenever we're interviewing uh, a haunt creator, whether it be an independent haunt. Uh, you know, like a Screamageddon or, or Sir Henry's or, you know, a theme, theme park haunt, like what you guys do. So, you know, this, first of all, kind of very general question. Um, talk about the process of creating uh, a theme park haunt attraction, say like a haunted house. What is that process like? So, like I mentioned earlier, we're, we're super thankful to have a lot of amazing ambassadors on our team. Um, and I wish I could honestly sit here and name them all because it's not one person. It's not one creative mind here, um, here at SeaWorld Orlando Entertainment. It, it is, you know, a lot of people's um, amazing creative um, thought process and design. So when we're, when we're going to create something new here in the park, we do, you know, throw out some ideas to sort of open the blue sky of, where we want to go, you know, give them somewhat of a, a direction. And then from there, we, we allow pretty much everyone on our team to, to add to that. And, and maybe that's just layer upon layer upon layer, whether your, your forte is in costuming or whether your forte is in lighting or in storytelling or choreography or cast, any of those things, it takes all of us to be able to create something. So coming up with new items here, um, like I mentioned, uh, we do have a new haunted house this year. It's called Blood Beckoning. And when we first started talking about what Hallow Scream year two was going to look like and, you know, who was going to be our siren icon of year two. And when we decided it was going to be Scratch, you know, so many fans love Scratch and pretty much were obsessed with Scratch last year. And they yep. wanted to wanted to not only meet her and take a picture, um, so we we knew that we wanted to create a, a haunted house or a haunted attraction that could incorporate her in her underworld. Um, and that is what Blood Beckoning turned out to be. Blood Beckoning um, is an underground world um, where you will have an encounter uh, with Scratch in her temple. So you come oh. face to face with her as she has a cult following and she wants to gather as many people or many blood sacrifices that she can because all the blood that she's going to take is only going to make her more beautiful. And that is the general um, synopsis over blood beckoning. So blood beckoning, like I mentioned, is our new haunted house. It's It makes our our park full circle uh for the event and um definitely come check out our new haunted house it's it's probably i'm thinking going to be my new top favorite house that we have here um i'm super excited for our guests to check it out fantastic that's awesome and i do love scratch as i mentioned earlier makes sense that her house will be very blood oriented given Scratch's uh, tendency and preferences for things. That's, that's awesome. And I look forward to experiencing that house. That's great. That's great. So again, you know, we talked about, and I mentioned you earlier, uh, what our overall mission here at Coaster Challenge is, is, you know, theme park therapy, helping people stay in the moment and helping, you know, avoid things like depression and anxiety and all the craziness of the world, just stress that we all have in life. So you know, one of the things, one of the core aspects to our mission is having people face their fears. And the idea that we have is that by people facing fear in a controlled, safe, fun environment, like a theme park, riding a coaster, going on a thrill ride, you know, or going to a haunt event, uh, by doing those types of things, they're able to deal with real anxiety, you know, real world anxiety, I should say, um, better. It's almost like strength training. 
And so again, they're doing something fun, which, you know, gym is a lot of how people don't find the gym fun. Well, these strength <laughs> training for the mind, yeah. which is about, again, facing fear, it can be fun, you know, in the case of entertainment and theme parks and so forth. So talk to me, you know, as a creator, you know, with, or, with your role with Hallow Scream, talk to me about, you know, what role do theme park haunts have, in your opinion, in helping people face their fears? I am 100% on the same page as like you just mentioned, um, you know, pushing people a little bit, pushing their boundary or opening their eyes to even new things um, and challenging themselves. You know, like you mentioned, riding a roller coaster is pretty much the same. I'm sure we all remember our first time that we uh, went on a roller coaster. We'll remember our first haunted house, most likely, and um, how it pushed us, um, you know, to whether we're sweating in our seat or whether we are verbally like screaming or shrieking um, in our haunted attraction, we all remember um, how it pushed us in a new way. And, and most likely from that, if you're a continuing person, whether it's you know talking about roller coasters or talking about even a haunted attraction, is uh, you just want more. It's that adrenaline. You're like, I just I need more now. Um, so I, I completely agree with you. It's, it's pushing people in a new way and. Um, I would even say like living your life on the edge a little bit. Yeah, nope, absolutely in a safe way. And yeah, and uh, yeah, absolutely. And that's why, you know, even though we're a coaster podcast and a theme park podcast, you know, we are trying to, as we did last year, but it's certainly expanding things this year, trying to give some attention to in, in the haunt season, the fall season, September, October, to interviews like this where we're talking to haunt creators independent haunt creators as well as theme park haunt creators because again it's part it's core to our mission and a lot of this does happen at theme parks so that makes sense so you know thanks for sharing your opinion on that and i agree 100 percent. you're spot on so along those lines because obviously you know even your shows but certainly the the, sh at the uh the haunted houses as well you know, they are, they are scary. They're going to have that edge to them, as you described. So how do you, you mentioned earlier, okay, let me kind of set the stage for you here, that you you have your ambassadors, let your ambassadors kind of be creative. And, you know, given that you're not using IP, the benefit of not using IP, say for a haunted house, is the sky's the limit. You're not yeah. bound by, you know, a contract with X and X, you know, uh, production company that owns that, that, that license, that IP, you know, whatever that movie or TV show is or whatnot. So you don't have to worry about that stuff. So you can just do whatever you want. So doing whatever you want, though, also can be dangerous because you don't want to make things, for example, at a theme park hunt too scary. You know, it is SeaWorld still. So how do you make sure that your ambassadors, you know, find the right balance in creating, say, a haunted house? And it's just the right amount of scary, not too, quote unquote, wimpy and not too scary. Yeah. Honestly, it's collaboration, collaboration between different uh, ambassadors on our team of seeing, you know, is that the right fix? Is Does that feel like the correct right direction that where we want to live or where this realm is or, or what we're trying to achieve? What is the goal? Um, and I do believe collaboration and communication between all of the different departments within entertainment um, and not only entertainment of bringing our other partners, our wonderful park partners in um, to create it, you know, it's, it takes all of us. It's not only entertainment here to create a successful event. It takes, you know, our park operations team, our culinary team, even our, you know, here being specifically at, at SeaWorld, our zoological team, it takes all of us to be on the same page to create that safe event and make sure that we're, we're, doing what we're promising is scaring people and making them enjoy themselves or, or challenge themselves or push themselves. Um, but it's just a, a direct communication between all those different lines of businesses and, and to making sure we're, we're hitting that mark. And um, I'm pretty proud of what we're able to do here. Nice. That makes, it makes a lot of sense and make, you know, making sure it's a collaborative effort kind of helps make sure that you have those kind of voices of reason or different perspectives of, hey, maybe that's going a little too far and, you know, or maybe we exactly. should do this in this direction. And yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So thanks. Thanks for sharing that perspective. Well, you know, thanks again for talking all about Hallow Scream and this now second fear. 
uh, again, using that pun, uh, I am, again, very excited uh, about um, going to this year's event and checking it out. Again, probably more than once, especially mm -hmm. since some of my favorites are coming back that I and love so much. I was going to say, really I'm glad you're that. a Scratch fan. So I'm pretty excited oh, yeah. for you, actually. Oh, yeah. No, I'm a Scratch fan. I am a Longshoreman fan. I'm a Monster Stomp fan. I'm a uh, the Siren Song fan. I, I'm a fan of all your interactive awesome. scare actors. And scare I love zones, that. So. Yeah, so you know, there's a lot, there's a lot to love about Hollow Scream, absolutely. So, and again, I'm not just saying that because I'm talking to you. So, I'm excited, and hopefully, some of our listeners, whether they got to experience it last year, will go back and and, and enjoy some of those favorites again. Discover some of the new things you're adding, like the new haunted house, you know, and, and seeing how Scratch is going to be uh, having fun this at this year's event. Or certainly, anyone that's not seen it yet, uh, not been to the event yet, uh, has some has a chance this year again to check it out. So that that's fantastic. And again, listeners. I cannot recommend enough Monster Stomp, Siren Song, the two shows. And again, all the houses are great. Really everything. There was nothing I didn't like at last year's event. Nothing was a dud to me. I mean, honestly. So just check it all out. Just enjoy it. Enjoy that immersion and that escape from reality that's so healthy. So wrapping things up here, Kyle. Again, you know about our mission here at Coaster Challenge. So Again, this doesn't have to be haunt related. This can just be, this is really generally, and I don't want to steer you too far here because we like people to be creative and each person has a different answer for this question. But this is really about thinking about real life, about dealing with real world problems, dealing with, you know, anxiety and, and depression and things like that. You know, what advice would you give listeners that are listening? You know, the best word of advice I would I would say is just don't be afraid to challenge yourself in a new way. Don't, don't be complacent. Um, complacent, I guess, and in what you're afraid to do. Um, challenge yourself every day, you know, like we mentioned, the world is a crazy place and I, you're, you never know what tomorrow will bring you. So every single day, try to challenge yourself, try to try something new in your life. Um, that's sort of what I try to live my motto by. And um, yeah, that, that's what I would challenge the listeners to is that just, if you're, if you're someone that might be terrifying of you're like I am not a haunted house person I am not a terrifying event I would challenge yourself of you know everything we've talked about today is that come experience the event come come experience hollow scream or give it a shot um because it it, it has something for everyone so awesome awesome now that's great advice I don't think we've had that advice before I love it I love it that's really really good so last but not least here Kyle uh, if you want to go ahead and share, you know, the basic details about the event, maybe the dates, um, where people can, can, you know, the website people can go to, um, you know, anything online, uh, social media, uh, if you want to share anything personal, you know, sometimes creators have their own personal pages where they share some of the stuff they come up with. Um, if you want to share any, whatever you want to share, uh, social media, website wise and information wise. Absolutely. So if you don't have your tickets yet, I would highly, highly, highly recommend going to SeaWorld.com, um, clicking on the Orlando homepage and being able to buy your Howl Scream tickets now. We do offer uh, single day tickets to the event. We also do offer that unlimited visit. If you are someone that is in, enjoying themselves or wants to come back this year, enjoyed the event last year and you're like, you're all about haunted events and maybe not even haunted events, but, you know, even experiencing SeaWorld after dark. Um, if we have all of that available on the website. If you don't already, please make sure that you, um, your Instagram, you follow Hollow Scream Orlando on Instagram. Uh, we keep up to date with all new, exciting little clues and hints and things that are going on with the event. Um, so you definitely want to follow along there. If you're someone that wants to come and experience the event in a VIP way, also on the website, you can experience something or go ahead and purchase on a specific night uh, uh, called a VIP terror tour. And I'm not going to lie. If I was coming to the event as a guest, I'm going to do it the terror tour way. Uh, you get a, if you're familiar with other parks, a personalized tour guide um, that will take you from 
um, house to house, to scare zone to scare zone, to bar to bar, to show to show with all front of the line access with reserved seating. Um, and also when you go to those bars, there is a, a specific section where you do not have to wait in line for that cocktail or that drink of any sort. So you can get a uh, front of the line experience the whole way through, not only with that, but uh, the awesome terror tour guides uh, have the backstory. If you're one of those people that are really into the backstory of the houses, the backstories of the scare zones, what we're all about, how it ties us together, maybe some uh, helpful tips and tricks, um, terror tour is the way to go. So online, seerotorlando.com, you can go ahead and book that. Awesome. Yeah, terror tour, that's great. I know that the I've not done them before myself. Uh, but I have friends that have done the kind of those VIP type tours specifically to a haunt events, uh, because the thing about haunt events is there's, a, you know, typically there's a lot to do and it's not in, in a, you know, a very long time if you just go for one time. So I would say I would agree with you there just in general there, Kyle, especially if, you, if someone if you just want to go once or make sure to experience everything in one night, and get that full experience, even if maybe you're going to come back later. There's no better way than a tour like that. So good, good advice there. Well, thank you so much, Kyle. Obviously, I know you're very busy. This is a busy time of year for you. You've got obviously Hallow Scream, but then right after Hallow Scream, you guys got a couple weeks in between, and then you get going with Christmas Celebration, which is one of my favorite shows that you guys do, and events that you guys do each year. So I appreciate it, given how busy you and your team are, that uh, you could take the time to talk to me today. So thank you. Absolutely. I totally appreciate it. And I uh, can't wait to see you out here. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And if you want to see more of us, we upload every Friday. And check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all at Coaster Challenge. Links are in the description below. Thanks for joining us here today.